How's it going friends and welcome back to the channel. So in this video we are going to be looking at TACOM's 135th Berger, Ber, Berger Panzer 2. I think I pronounced that right. I probably haven't. I do apologize if I butcher that but I think it's the is it Berger Panzer 2. Uh, so we're going to be looking at this. It's going to be uh, it's a tank recovery or a, a like sort of like engineers uh, type uh, vehicle. Um, it's also going to be the first tack on kit I have built, and it seems an absolutely lovely uh, kit, and it's got some really nice details, which we'll obviously look at first in this video. This video is going to be a full build, start pretty much start to finish. Um, so yeah, that's that's what we're going to be looking at. So grab yourself a brew and a bicky, and let's just jump straight to it. So this is the first tack on kit I have ever done. And I must say, I am really, really impressed with the detail. I've always heard and seen really good things with tack on kits, but I've just never bought one. Um, but it says the, the detail in it is absolutely amazing. It's really uh, nice, uh, crisp detail. And as you can see some of the, the welds uh, seams there. You can see all the locating pins for all the small parts that go onto the vehicle. Everything else again, really nice detail in the shackles, the tools, the um, you know hatch lids, the, the, the wheels. Everything is really, really nicely detailed. The kit also comes with workable plastic tracks, and they seem relatively easy put to put together. But I think they might be a little bit time consuming, so we'll see when we get to that. The kit also comes with uh, some string for the uh, crane. Um, hook bit um you've got uh, braided copper wiring for the towing cable as well which obviously we'll have to uh, cut down but we've got uh, enough for two towing cables there uh, we've also a nice bit of photo edge. it's actually the only photo, bit of photo edge here in the kit for the uh, like radiator grill at the back and those little arrow markers there are for uh, on the side of the crane to uh, point out the marker at, I think it's the angle it's supposed to be at and a nice simple set of decals uh, and also very nicely printed ones as well the instructions themselves come in this nice glossy uh, kind of book um, really uh, nicely laid out as well very simple and easy to follow of course we get the usual at the start all the cautions and some little helps and tips and whatnot as well as your parts call out as well and it's like it says you know it's very um, you know easy instructions uh, to follow everything is quite easily laid out the only thing that they don't uh, actually tell you within the kit is actually how many links that you need uh, per track. So I'm gonna have to guess those uh, a little bit and sort of maybe a bit of trial and error at fitting to see um, how many links we need. But again, you know, it, this kit is actually quite, um, considering the amount of sort of small parts that uh, go onto the vehicle, it seems to be quite actually a fairly, uh, you know, relatively simple and straightforward kit to build. And of course, right at the back, we have uh, um, crane assembly. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to go straight into the uh, colour callouts, and we've got a few um, uh, options to go with, but we've only kind of got three really. We've got a couple of um, camo ones, uh, a desert type, um, I was going to say camo, but a desert scheme, and a sort of like olive drab, which I think would be uh, olive gruns, I think, uh, if I remember rightly, for German markings. And we've got a PR code at the back there that sends you straight to the website. Now, if I'd have done my research properly uh, on the vehicle, I would have realised when I was putting uh, the suspension gear on, um, is that because the way I want to have this um, set up, I want to have it as the crane uh, out in operation. If I researched it properly, I'd have realised that I shouldn't have um, actually glued these uh, into their sort of like level position. Uh, the back ones, so the front should be. Uh, lower um as it turns out the it seems to lower i don't know if it's something to do with the, the weight of it i'm not i don't know it's it's too modern for me to, to fathom out um but uh, yeah i should have actually um 
change the suspension so the front of the vehicle is actually lower than the back um, most of the research I actually did for this was actually just weathering it um, so yeah there's a little bit of a mistake there but you know it's, it's one of those it's nothing overly major but as you can see this all this you know goes together you know really really simply and really easy uh, and they're in generally in quite you know sort of blocky parts so you know there's not a lot really of you know issues of fitting stuff uh, together so it goes together really nicely they also leave most of these parts uh, movable like the uh, dozer on the front and the crane itself and actually the tracks actually will if you push them on the ground actually will uh, work but as you can see again they've de detailed this really nicely i mean if you look at pictures of the um the actual uh, vehicle they have absolutely nailed um you know this vehicle and, and getting all the details right But really from here on out everything is mainly small details um, and they you know they go together really easily as you can see as I said before you know you've got all the locator pins for all the parts uh, where they need to go the only thing with it uh, that I found is that actually there's a lot um, of uh, seam lines um, throughout the parts they're actually really simple uh, really easy to get rid of uh, the, the plastic itself is relatively soft so I use most of it with the back uh, of a blade as you can see what I was doing there I'm using um, tell me extra thin um, over those seam lines just to soften it up and if you keep you know rubbing away at it um, very gently it will remove uh, those uh, seam lines like I said it's quite a relatively soft plastic so it was really uh, really easy and really quick to remove now at this point of the instructions i'd realized i hadn't put the um sort of the periscopes uh, within the tank so at this point it also glued the hull uh, together so this posed a little bit of a problem but fortunately uh, there was a hole in the bottom of the vehicle that i honestly did not cut out uh, to have to fit all these uh, vision slit periscopes uh, into the model these periscopes also didn't even need gluing. Uh, the the holes for these actually were quite um, were quite a tight fit. So quite literally, all these um, were sort of self fitted uh, into place without actually any uh, gluing uh, involved. The only one small thing that annoyed me, which it's not really a big issue, but there's this hatch that goes over the front of where a uh, sort of towing cable uh, motor point is um so i had to actually have that fitted uh, open so it's not a big deal but it annoyed me a little bit um but yeah all that the only thing that was a little bit of a fiddle was trying to get these towing uh, towing cables to, to stay in place when i was uh, fixing them in at this point we're doing uh, the crane and again like i said earlier on they give you you know the ability to actually have this as like kind of like a working model um, so if you want to have that uh, crane to, to operate properly um, you know just make sure um, how you glue uh, the pistons now for putting the main thing together at this point I didn't want to put the uh, string in uh, for the for the rope so as you can see the way it fits together I was able to leave the top part of the crane uh, loose uh, so I was able to be able to paint the whole model and then to do the uh, cable and put that in later on so at this point I was going to call it good on the video but it would have been a really short and boring video because there wasn't really overly much uh, eventful uh, putting the whole thing together but as you can see here you know they give you the flexibility to have uh, the crane um, sort of like stowed away if you like but like I said I want to have 
um, the crane sort of in operation. So, as it is now, we can move straight on to the painting. So what I want to do with this one is I actually want to try out the sort of like tricolour scheme uh, for this and actually try out AK's uh, camo masking putty. So to try and make things a little bit easier, I went a little bit old school and mapped out in pencil uh, the camo markings. I used the uh, obviously the ones in the colour call out. Unfortunately, they're not overly accurate, um, so I had to do a little bit of uh, guesswork trying to you know do this uh, scheme so usually for uh, masking camo I usually use blue tack because it's a lot cheaper easily uh, available but I thought for a change you know I'd, I'd try this stuff out because it looked a little bit uh, better uh, for actually doing uh, for these type of vehicles where you've got a lot of uh, bits and bobs on um, and blue tack does tend to stick in those areas and can be a little bit awkward to get out and from what I've seen of this it's supposed to be really simple the stuff seems to be like this kind of plasticky top I'm not actually sure what the compound of it is but it's kind of like a sort of plastic um, latex type uh, sort of material um, but it, it works really nicely um, it does seem to when you first put it on like it doesn't want to stick to anything but once you sort of push it down uh, onto the model it actually will stick and will not move but what you really need to do with this stuff is is actually work quite quickly with it particularly on sort of uh, the sides of vehicles and if you use too much of the putty it actually starts to sort of um, droop um, so you know you want to kind of move quite quickly um, with this stuff and the removal of the putty is is really good uh, as like I says you know you just pull a bit away and pretty much all of it will come uh, all together and in very few cases any of it actually stuck uh, into some of the tighter areas even on that uh, grill at the back as you can see it comes straight away if that was blue tack you know you'd have to go back in with the blue tack to try and you know tease it off uh, the model but as you can see with this it comes out and it gives a really nice sharp uh, camo line and of course for the benefits of this type of product it's completely reusable just plonk it back in the tin and uh, it's good to go again so as you can see at this point the camo's all down and I've also put the decals on I think there's something like about six or seven of the things uh, to put on so you know if you hate decals uh, this is a great model for you because there's, <laughs> there's only a couple of them uh, to put onto the model and also as you can see I've started uh, doing a bit of weathering uh, on the tools most of them are kind of a standard olive drab color uh, but with some of the metal stuff I based it in a sort of a blacky uh, fill gray uh, sort of uh, color and then choose some uh, enamel uh, rust and then on the front of the dozer because I wanted to look a bit well used and polished I used uh, some um, steel uh, paint for that so I'll very quickly show you um, how I've done uh, the rusting technique this is the on the research deal at the bottom of the dozer is quite well uh, rusted up and it's somewhat I use all the time so you, you, you probably may know what I'm doing but I've done a wet wet uh, wet wet wet, wet. It's a terrible band that was a wet blend um, using uh, rust enamel paint we start off with uh, using AK's um, light rust and then um, Again, while this is still wet, using MIG's uh, Streaky Rust. Uh, again, both enamel uh, paint. Um, my new favourite uh, rust uh, paints to use because um, I just think they, once they've dried and everything, they look absolutely amazing. And I've also realised at this point, this is where I should be using notes. Um, what I've just said, I did actually in the opposite way around. So I used the Streaky Rust uh, first from uh, MIG. 
and then uh, the light rush from uh, AK. And, you know, just dabbing it about, moving it around, and once it dries, it gives a really good, uh, convincing, uh, rusty look. I also use the same technique uh, on the spare tracks, but adding uh, some speckling uh, on there to give them a little bit more texture when they dry. So as we move on to the main part of the weathering, um, the lower half of the hull, I use uh, AK's splatter effects stripped uh, earth. Um, it's an acrylic um, sort of kind of paste. Um, it's got some uh, grit in it, some texture in there, which is pretty good. Obviously gives you a little bit of volume on there. And as you can see, I use some just, just tap water and to sort of streak it out a little bit. Um, at this area, because again, it's going to be covered by the tracks, but it's a good area to sort of start on to try and uh, your weathering out. As it was, I wasn't overly worried about the actual colour of uh, the paste because as you can see, I'm airbrushing over it. For this, I'm using uh, Flat Earth from uh, Tamiya, which is XF52. I think I may have added a little bit of red brown in there, so it gives a bit more of a kind of a, I think it's kind of like a clay sort of look. The, the, the photos I've seen of the vehicle um, seems to be sort of clay looking um, mud over the vehicle. Now before I sprayed it, I actually put some um, about two or three layers of chipping fluid because what I wanted to try and do was do some uh, rain streaking and unfortunately it didn't really actually work out the way I wanted it to. Um, all it did was do an actual, what it's supposed to really do is a chipping effect. So that wasn't what I wanted but it kind of looked alright. Uh, so what I did was once um, I'd sort of had a go at the, the chipping, uh, I lightly missed it over um, the flat earth again to sort of blend it in a little bit. So it kind of gave the impression that some of the mud has fallen off or rubbed off and you know fresh mud has been uh, thrown over the top. So like I said, it wasn't the effect I was going for but you know I kind of made good out of kind of like a bad situation. So to carry the effect of sort of like accumulated dust and dirt and sort of rain water uh, across the top part of the vehicle, I used uh, the same uh, paint, but all I did was I thinned it out a lot further. As you can see, I just kind of sort of washed it out over the cross of the top of the vehicle and then, you know, sort of streaking it in the kind of right direction, uh, particularly across like the front. Uh, normally I call it a glacier plate, but I'm not quite sure what it is on this one, um, and make it, you know, give the impression that it's running down. So to finish sort of off the uh, mud effect, um, I use some artist oils, uh, which I used uh, burnt umber and uh, raw umber. And the point of this was to sort of give the impression that, you know, certain areas where obviously there was like thick buildups of um, dirt, that obviously wouldn't dry as quick as the thinner layers. Um, so, you know, just add them into the areas, mainly into the sort of creases and sort of around some of the running uh, gears and suspension arms. Um, and also sort of streaked it up and down a little bit just to add a little bit more to it. But again, like I says, it's not really gonna be seen uh, overly well, but it's a good sort of starting place to sort of try some of this out uh, before putting it around uh, the rest of the model. I also did the same on some of the upper surfaces. Again, I'd seen this in some of the uh, reference photos I've seen. So I put these into relatively light layers and uh, built it up because I thought this was going to be a lot easier to do it this way. Even though they're enamel paints, I could quite easily um, you know, clear it off and, and redo it again. It wouldn't attack the uh, acrylic paints uh, underneath. But, you know, sometimes working up in thinner layers actually works better than just putting, you know, relatively thick uh, layers on. Again, I heavily uh, apply this around the back of the vehicle because I assume, you know, a lot of the mud will be kicked up and there'll be thicker layers of mud on the back. Um, so I kind of give that impression that the back area was still quite wet. And afterwards, just to add a little bit more, I used um, a cocktail stick 
uh, and quite heavily thinned out and uh, just spe speckled uh, the back of the vehicle. Again, just to show that, you know, some of this mud has been sprayed at the back and it's still wet. So I believe this little thing here is for um, uh, mountain engines. And what I wanted to do is give the impression that at some point they've had a proper knackered engine that spewed oil or fuel all over the place. So I've actually used uh, AK's uh, oil stains uh, for this and I've plastered it about. I've had to put a, a couple of two or three uh, layers of stuff on. But if you want to give the impression of either fuel or oil has been down for quite a while, because of course this stuff dries quite glossy so once it's dried give it a bit of a misting of um, matte uh, varnish and then if you want to give the impression that you know it's dried but then there's been another oil leak on top of that since obviously just apply um, the you know the stains uh, again and just keep playing away around with it until you get something that you're you're quite happy with While I was going through uh, photos uh, to, you know, try and figure out how to, to weather this thing, I'd uh, seen one or two that seemed to like have, um, you know, like kind of like a, I don't know, she's like an oil or grease sort of uh, around, you know, some of the working parts like the hinges and the door handles. So I used Abtailung's um, uh, grease uh, for this and just sort of plastered it about, thinned it out a little bit, and sort of spread it around so it would just give, um, you know, just a relatively light area of um you know maybe like wet grease or something um i don't really know what i was doing i was just trying to copy the photo uh, that i'd done i'd also done the same because uh, i've seen this on a reference photo this I, I honestly don't know what it is because this is too modern of a vehicle for me to understand what any of this is uh but i assume it's obviously something to do with oil and hydraulics uh so i used again the exact same uh abtailung uh, grease for this and um, again, from that reference photo, I said it was quite heavy and I quite liked it, so I did the same. So, for the exhaust, I used uh, some soot powdered pigments and slathered it all over the uh, exhaust. And what I wanted to do is give the impression of like exhaust build up so like chunks of sort of like soot uh, sitting within those vents so I plastered it with the, the powder left some quite uh, sort of chunky bits of pigment in there and then went over um, with some um, pigment fixer uh, and hoping that it will leave uh, some you know sort of chunky pits of uh, pigment in there unfortunately it didn't really work out quite well um i don't know what it actually did but it sort of looked a bit weird so i had to go over it uh, again uh, with the pigments so as we move to the road wheels i bought one of these sort of uh, circular sort of stencil things to try and um you know make painting ties a little bit neater so what i've done is i've painted the um, rubber outer obviously with a rubber black and then with this uh, stencil found the right size for the tire and painted it in the base color and this left a nice perfect um, you know paint finish uh, around it with any, any overspray or use sometimes I tend to paint it, paint it by hand you know you go over a little bit and you know it looks really nice and made process actually a lot quicker And for weathering the road wheels and the tracks themselves, uh, I used the same uh, sort of mix as I did uh, for the kind of wash over the top of the vehicle. So I used a bit of tap water and some flat earth, mixed it up so it was really, really thin, and then just quite simply plastered everything uh, in this. So 
so for the tracks themselves, I know I haven't done. A, uh, I forgot to record it. I'm afraid, uh, but it is really simple and and quick and easy to do. It's probably the easiest tracks I've ever built. Um, so you've got the main uh, trap pads, and then you've got the guide horn and the which is on for this a lot of rubber stoppers uh, for the linking parts. Um, they literally just all slot together, and I, th I think it probably took me about maybe about 15 minutes probably less than that to 20 minutes to do both sets um so yeah it was really quick and easy it was just the easiest tracks I've, I've ever had to build uh for, for workable ones uh for the rusting uh, sorry the weathering of the the, the tracks are rusted on the same as i did the bottom of the dozer blade as you can see there i painted the rubber parts of the track using um a tire black from uh, tamia and then of course because you're going to have um the road wheels rubbing uh you know across the metal surface of the inside of the track so we used a pencil and i used this uh silicon uh, brush just to polish those tracks up a little bit further and then afterwards the same as i did with the road wheels and everything else i gave it that kind of wash uh, with the uh, flat earth and then to make it look like it was a running and working vehicle, the inside of the track and, and across the front, I used a cotton bud just to clear that away a bit, um, just to show, again, you know, this is a working vehicle. And then all that was left to do was to feed the tracks through the running gear and connect them up. And again, this was really easy because the way the um, tracks uh, fit together as you can see there just putting that rubber end on and that's it really simple and easy to do so there we go friends it's near time to show you the finished model now i've got to say this is the first time i've done one of these kits and yeah it was a kind of relatively uh simple straightforward kit there wasn't loads i mean there was loads of stuff to go onto it but there was no like loads of bits and bobs that have been thrown onto it the is the only thing that probably took the most amount of work was doing the tracks which i was quite surprised surprised uh were actually quite a pleasure especially after building the ones for the um sherman i did uh recently um that took a lot of effort and was pretty much soul destroying to do but these were actually quite good and they are still uh, flexible uh, even though the, the run again these are quite tight but you know they're still flexible which is good uh, so yeah it was, it was an amazing kit really well detailed and you know I thoroughly uh, enjoyed it and recommend it uh, to you guys if you are interested in building this kit so just before I go, I'd like to thank you guys ever so much for watching. I do hope you have uh, enjoyed this video. Um, if you're new around here and you haven't done so already, please uh, consider liking and subscribing to the channel and sharing the video if you have. Um, also, there are links in the description if you'd like to support the channel even further. Um, but again, just watching these videos, like them, sharing them helps a great deal and giving the channel some good exposure. So guys, again, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the finished model and I'll see you again soon.